Hello, and welcome to Help My Daughter Loves Horses. Today, we're going to talk about the sitting trot. In a sitting trot, you don't post, but rather allow your lower back and your loose hips to absorb the bounce of the horse. The trick to a good sitting trot is to think about letting your hips tuck under and forward towards the horse's ears every time you would normally post up out of the saddle. If your lower back is too tight as you try to let your hips move with the horse, you'll end up just bouncing around a lot on the horse's back, which isn't very comfortable for anyone. It's easiest if you start practicing the sinning trot on a comfortable, slow horse, rather than a very excited or very bouncy one. Don't be afraid to start out with a slow trot. But don't think about trying to just hold your horse back every time you do a sitting trot. You still need to let him move forward and freely. If you stay too tight with your seat or clamp on with your legs, you'll resist his motion and make his trot short and even bouncier. Here, I demonstrate two common problems with the sitting trot. I'm actually holding Noah back too much, you can see from his high head and his very short right. strides. And also my feet and lower leg are too far forward. I'm doing this because I'm trying to tuck my hips under, but it's shoving my lower feet forward. So even as you tuck your hips, you still have to think about balancing on those three seat bones, staying tall, keeping your ankle in line with your hips, in line with your shoulders. Good. Good. Another common problem that people have while trying to learn the sitting trot is they clamp their lower leg onto the horse to try to keep them down rather than bouncing out of the saddle. Here, my trainer's having me do something called she calls the swinging leg exercise, and she's forcing me to actually consciously swing my lower leg forward and backward. This ensures that my lower leg is loose and not clamped onto to Noah, making either of us uncomfortable. This is a good exercise to practice if you are consciously moving your leg back and forth but make sure that you also don't go to the other extreme, where your leg is so loose that it's flopping around out of control. Once you know how to post, you may wonder why you would ever want to learn the sitting trot, which seems so much more difficult and uncomfortable. But the sitting trot allows you to stay in much better contact with your horse and use your seat much more effectively. All advanced dressage tests require the rider to do it at the sitting trot. Additionally, doing trot canter transitions from a sitting trot is much more effective than trying to do it from a posting trot because your seat is in full contact with the horse all the time. I wish I could tell you that there was a shortcut to getting good at the sitting trot, but honestly it's lots of practice and lots of hours in the saddle getting bounced around and figuring out exactly what it feels like to have your hips and back move freely with the horse while not clamping with your lower leg or pinching with your knees. A good exercise to help you get your balance is to try trotting without any stirrups at all. You should probably start this on the lunge line so that if you lose your balance you can grab the saddle rather than grabbing at your horse's reins. Another thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you remember your half halts. While you don't want to hold your horse back, you also don't want him to get too fast. So feel free to throw small circles, half halts, or even transitions down to the walk into your work to make sure that your horse stays slow enough for you to sit comfortably on him. Although, if you keep practicing your sitting trot, you'll be able to sit all of your horse's trot gates, from his collected to his extended trot. Good luck, stay safe, and have fun riding. So he can't always hold it, do you have to have Thanks for watching this video, Help My Daughter Loves Horses. Check out our website for more.